Biologically, men love to be needed. Women love to be wanted. <laughs> men love to be needed so there's this delicate dance that i always recommend to women to have know when to be strong not controlling strong because beside every successful man there's a strong woman they say right so she needs to pick her times and you know if she wants to have that conversation with him she needs to express something that she was not happy with she needs to do that but in a way that isn't condescending in a way that isn't emasculating the man welcome to the asian dating podcast i'm your host may bugenhagen i am the founder of two asian matchmakers that serves men in the u.s who want to meet asian women so if your age is 35 to 65 i would love to help you out and this week i have a very very special guest, Stefania Paleo. She is a professional dating and relationship coach for high achieving men. Stefania helps high achieving men attract their ideal partner. She is the founder and CEO of the Gentleman Square, a digital platform that leads men to the pinnacle of dating expertise. Her exclusive programs and training help you navigate the dating scenes as a successful man, helps you with strategies to to start talking to right women confidently with insights of the female energy and how to become irresistible to your ideal partner. She also helps you with dating techniques you can implement in your dating life right now. So welcome to the show, Miss Certified Hypnotherapist, personal trainer, a published author, international public speaker, and an unstoppable visionary dedicated to serving men. Of course, I'm going to put all of the information in the show notes. <laughs> how are you, Stefania? I'm great, May. How are you? Good, <laughs> Thank you. Good. Thank now, you for the introduction and great to see you. How did you get into this field where you're helping high achieving men? Because I feel like they can really excel in their personal companies and their business, but yet in their love lives, they might need a little bit of help. So how did you get started in this niche? Oh, wow. Well, it started a while back, <laughs> um, probably about five years ago. Um, I was actually living in Italy at the time, and I was working with a lot of men um, in a company. And I just, at the time, I was also coaching, but I, however, I was coaching women. So it was really interesting working, you know, in the sector with a lot of men and realizing that a lot of the conversations you know, I would overhear or, you know, men would share um, was about relationships, believe it or not. <laughs> like you think it's only happens between women, but um, yeah, it, they probably, I'd say men don't seem to complain or, you know, drag conversations like that, but I could tell that they were very, um, you know, great CEOs and very good at what they did, great leaders, great companies, really like successful at doing what they do. But there was always an element that was missing in their relationships. They were either unable to um, get out there and find the right person, being time or the stresses of work. There was just a lot going on. So I really thought, mm, okay, there's a real a need here. And, and, and women, on the other hand, when I was coaching them, they would quote unquote, complain about men not giving them enough time. Um, they'd met this great guy who was, you know, seemed successful, high achieving, everything they wanted, but they sort of didn't get it, have it together in their relationship. So um, yeah, I thought, you know what, this is definitely an area where I can sort of be an advocate for men and give them the inside scoop of what you know, women uh, desire. And, you know, there's not a, um, sometimes men think women are really complicated, right? They just seem to think that their needs are very high and their wants, but usually it isn't that high. Uh, it boils down to really simplistic things. So coming in and being that advocate for men was where I decided to put my all my energy. And yeah, here I am for the gentleman square. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So do when the men come to you, do they admit that they want help? Do they admit that 
gosh, I wish I really knew what women were thinking half the time. Like, how do they, what kind of men come to you and approach you and want help? Okay, so it's a real mixed bag. <laughs> um, when I say mixed bag, there's, you know, men that have been in relationships or been married and divorced. There are men that uh, have dated all their lives, like they're quite mature, but not never really settled down, never found the right person. Or, you know, men that have had their heart broken, men that have been traumatized by a lot of women. There's a real mixture of um, clients that I do have and do serve. So, uh, yeah, to answer your question, there's a variation. And when they come to me, usually they may, you know, elaborate more on how, excuse me, what they haven't achieved and what they're attracting. And unfortunately, you know, for whatever reason, they get caught up in this vicious cycle of attracting the same type of lady. And usually, you know, they you know, their words, uh, a toxic woman, they're always seeming to attract either a toxic woman or a woman that is after their money. This is, this seems to be something that is really, you know, big out there and happening continuously. Men will be saying that, you know, they're gold diggers. If I'm not providing and giving what they want in, you know, monetarily money, material things. Um, yeah. They, they feel that they're just either an ATM. <laughs> um, yeah. I've heard all sorts of expressions, but yeah, that's, that's who comes to me. Yeah. So what challenges do most high achieving men have when attracting their ideal partner? What challenges? Okay. Well, again, various challenges. I think sometimes when um, a man or a woman, either party, when you've been caught up and been traumatized or you've had some um, experiences that haven't been too pleasant, you're, you're left somewhat jaded and that leaves scars, that leaves wounds, that, you know, it leaves some kind of um, trigger that can resurface, particularly if you meet someone that is quite similar to your last partner. And, you know, what do we do as human beings? We tend to know what we want and we seem to attract whether it's in, you know, physicality or um, emotional availability of what that person can give, we seem to be attracting the same type of partners. And the challenges are, is how do they get out of that cycle? Like, how do they break that? How do they? And in some cases, men that have worked with me have actually uh, attracted and built relationships with someone that they never thought that they would be attracted to. So it's it's quite interesting because when they work with me, there's a, you know, there's there's a lot that we peel back layers and a lot is revealed. And it's quite interesting and fun to see the transformation and and again to see the success in in how you know seeing men in healthy, uh, vibrant, thriving relationships. What is one example of a success story of a gentleman that you helped? He went from this, this to this, and now he's at this level. Like, what's a success story you can share with us? Okay. Um, I won't mention names, <laughs> but uh, I did have one gentleman who seemed to um, be uh, how, how, do you, how can you call it? The martyr or the, you know, the saver the type of guy that would just save women <laughs> from whatever. And he was attracting unemotion, uh, unavailable emotional women because they were so caught up in their own story, in their own drama, that he was wanting to help, wanting to save, wanting to, uh, I guess, save these women. So, after working with me, we we revealed that all this kind of stemmed back to his childhood, 
because we do a lot of, um, you know, we as going back and peeling back the layers, it can go back as far back as your childhood. And with this gentleman, it was where he, as a child, he, he was the eldest of um, six siblings and he was, I guess the carer, he was given the responsibility to care for his, you know, younger siblings, that that sort of transpired and, and repeated behaviour um, evolved into his adult life and into his relationships. So, uh, and and really interesting, his siblings, you know, I think four of them or three of them were sisters, so they were females. So, of course, there was a lot of female energy around him. So I think he kind of, believed or it was modeled to him by his mother that that was his role to you know save his sisters so in the end um he attracted he was able to break free from those old behavioral patterns um respect himself and really know how to set healthy boundaries which was so great because for him it was so difficult to do that because in his mind he thought by setting boundaries he was not being the man, he's not being the gentleman, he wasn't being what he was supposed to be as a partner. So, yeah, we overcome overcame those hurdles and, yeah, he's now in a real successful relationship um, and he's attracted someone that is prepared to meet him and grow with him um emotionally spiritually mentally so he's he's really doing really well yeah that that really it's just music to my ears to hear stories like that so what uh steps do you guide them when they want and you know that they need to set boundaries what's an example of a client that comes to you that needs to work on his boundaries what do you say to him and how can people know that they need to work on their boundaries? Well, first of all, I guess I get the client prepared with knowing what he wants and what he's comfortable with because everybody has different boundaries and we we go deep in really um, evaluating and discovering whether that that really feels good, whether it feels good in his body, like if he feels good in his own skin, being able to say um, yes or to be able to say no. So the, the, the steps are, you know, really um, it's hands-on. I get them to actually, I guess, go into that state and feel it and to really tap into their themselves, into their higher self to see whether that resonates with them and whether it's in alignment because often um it's the the mind and the heart which is not in alignment they're not in coherence and that's why we tend to do what we do and have really dramatic experiences because <laughs> we're not really in alignment our head says one thing our heart says another and we're just being pulled from every direction now, what are some things that men can do to raise their self-confidence and their self-esteem while they're dating and meeting women? Well, there's various. Um, that's a really good question because there's various. It could mean from, you know, dress code, uh, getting a new hairstyle, um, changing the colors that they wear in their dress, you know, attire. Um, it can also mean self-reflection you know self-talk we really evaluate what type of self-talk is going on now and how we can change it and how we want to feel so we have to cha usually change the self-talk because as we know that's what's feeding the subconscious mind and that's what creates our behavior as well so definitely self-talk uh, feeling good in your skin. Um, for some men, maybe, you know, getting back into some kind of physical fitness because, you know, when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you look good. And when you're feeling good in your own skin, you know how you feel. That brings confidence and that oozes sex appeal 
to a woman. When a man is confident, not arrogant, but confident, that is definitely, you know, sexy. Yeah. It Would is, you agree with is. that, May? I mean, you're a woman. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree when they can speak about something that they're confident in. And then you look at him in a different light, then you just feel like, oh, wow, he's really passionate about that. He really has a firm belief in something. So whether it agrees with you or not, the fact that he has his own beliefs and his own way of doing things or the confidence about what he's doing, it's it says a lot. So yeah, I'm sure men or women love confident men, but it's also not just a confident man at work. It could be a confident man playing pickleball or tennis or golf, or he's really excelling at, you know, certain type of books and he loves to read and he could talk about a topic. So there's a lot of ways to talk about someone's confidence. It's not just how confident they are at work and how much money they make, but it's like other little pieces that makes you think about him in that certain way. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I just want to add something to that. Now, sometimes we don't know everything, right? There are areas that we may not know about a certain topic. So I say to my clients, I say to my men, it's okay to say, you know, that's interesting. I don't, I didn't know that. Or, um, I didn't know that. Tell me more. So that can open up conversation. You're, you know, showing vulnerability that, you, you know, you don't need to know everything. <laughs> and I think as women, we, I don't, oh, I don't expect it that man, a man needs to know everything. There's, there's areas that they don't know. And, and when a man can actually be vulnerable and actually admit that, I think that also is quite sexy and confidence, you know, show oozes, oozes confidence because he's taking responsibility and saying, well, I didn't know, right. period. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think men get caught up in their heads sometimes that they need to know everything or they need to be able to fix everything for a woman. It's, it's not the case, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Now in your bio, you also say that you're a certified hypnotherapist. Now, Tell me a little bit about that and how you use it in helping your clients, because how do you know if someone is a skeptic about hypnotherapy and if it'll work or not? Okay, that's a great question, <laughs> because, uh, yes, I do work uh, with a lot of uh, hypnotherapy uh, sessions with my clients, and, and they know that because we, we discuss it now. Some clients may be skeptic and that's fine and they choose not to have hypnotherapy and I respect that. So there's other modalities. But for those that are open to it and are still skeptic because we do have that curiosity in us that want to know and we've heard about it, I go ahead with it. But first of all, talking about hypnosis, I just want to make it clear I, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist. So I'm not a stage hypnotherapist. It's a, not an entertaining type of hypnotherapy. I know that it's it's definitely not that Vegas style hypnotherapy on stage where people, you know, start barking like a dog or dropping, falling asleep. No, it's, it's, it's therapy. And hypnosis is not where you're totally knocked out and you have no control of what's happening you are at a theta state and you are uh, semi-conscious so you can hear my voice and you are able if you wish it's never happened to me to actually stop the session totally you know if something is not in alignment or not in agreement with yourself so yeah there's it, it it's an amazing uh, modality and I love it and men love it once they get over the skeptic stage because <laughs> most of them are, they can see the benefits, they can see the changes, and it's non-invasive. That's what I love about it. And that's what my clients, my male clients love about it, because it's not like a whole lot of talk therapy. We get to the root cause very quickly and we help, you know, get rid of the problem, resolve the issues 
in a way that's not invasive it's it's very relaxing and yeah it it it, it transpires into something that they think it's oh my god how did you do that stefania <laughs> that's not me it's you know it's it's the process it's it's definitely something worth trying definitely so what what's an ideal client for using hypnotherapy uh, give me an example of someone who comes to you and what their situation is and you would help them with that okay there's many um again the client has to be open to it in in and in agreement so if he comes along and he's like full-on skeptic and I have to also feel that energy and I'm also able to say, look, I don't think this therapy session, you know, therapy is suits you. So I will do a, a diagnosis and an evaluation. If the client has a little bit of slight skepticism, but yet he's open to it, then we go ahead and obviously I explain all the procedure. Now, a typical client might be someone who may have you know uh i guess anger issues you know like anxiety uh, fear uh, low self-confidence someone who may have a habit and wants to break it like wants to dissolve it um, or wants to enhance a skill wants to enhance some kind of quality that they've been working on uh, however they haven't been successful because they've been in a conscious state when we work with hypnosis we are working with the subconscious so it's a it, we calm down and relax the conscious mind so then we have a gateway to enter the subconscious to then put in new suggestions obviously the suggestions of what the client desires or wants to change so it may be a lot of things nail biting quit smoking yeah there's there's a, there's definitely a lot as i said when it comes to dating having that confidence uh you know for some men that are confident at work especially the high achieving man who's confident at work can delegate you know run a business run a whole company and yet when it comes to approaching a woman that he likes, it's not so much a woman that he's not that interested in, but a woman that he's really attracted to, something changes within and you can't explain it. You know, like he, he kind of goes to grasp all his strategies and skills to, uh, I guess, be more confident in front of this woman, but something happens so this is where hypnosis really works because you know we get him into a state and then when that actually happens it's like the mind the subconscious kicks in and it just flows his behaviors change i would think any man would say yes to this opportunity it's like it's almost like why not why not try this since you've been dating 20, 30 years or 10 years and it hasn't been working, why not be armed with everything in your power to make yourself better, right? Like why would someone be skeptical and not be open-minded to at least try it? Absolutely. Now, yeah. just talking about skepticism, right? <laughs> this is, and this is a true story. This is what's happened also in the past. I have men that say, okay, they they want to come and, you know, change their relationship journey into having more successful relationships. And because they are slightly skeptical. So I will say to them, you know, let's look at another area that you want to improve in your life. Let's, let's just forget about relationships for a minute. So they're either golfers or tennis players and they want to improve their golfing. I had one gentleman who wanted to improve his golfing swing and, you know, be able to, be a better player on the on the golf course and of course that was that was an ideal opportunity for him for me to work with him and he was very open to it because it's golf like you in his mind was like well you can't screw up my mind with you know playing golf because <laughs> this is this is 
their words, you know, oh, you're, you're playing with my head. You're going to screw with my head. And, um, yeah, so he had amazing results with his golf, you know, techniques, had improved and his games, you know, was winning and in tournaments. And, well, then he had the confidence, well, not the confidence, because he did have the confidence, but he had overcome the scepticism to then trust me with his relationship um, issues. Yeah. Did Isn't that interesting? Him? Yes, yes, yes. And of course, because he had had evidence, he had, you know, obviously experienced a shift, a positive shift. Um, he definitely, yeah, was more open to it. And of course, he was really open to it, which again, you know, the hypnosis and his relationship patterns had definitely improved. Yeah. Well, that's what they say about hypnotherapy and with anything in life, right? If you believe in it and you're open to it and you want to try it, you don't go in there and pay all this money and have a negative attitude about it, right? Because then it won't work because your attitude is half the battle. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then you have the ones that aren't really negative. They're just skeptic. They have a question mark. And so again, through progressive relaxation, it, it gets them to a state, well, they're, they're not negative, but they're not believers, but, you know, whatever happens, happens. And they're good. They're good clients as well because there's no nothing really pulling them and holding them back. So, yeah, definitely, definitely great. Now, I you've been, it. <laughs> now, you've been working with high-achieving men for quite a bit of time now. So what kind of advice would you give me if I had a brother or cousin or a male neighbor who really wants to date women and be in a relationship, like what is some dating advice you can give them? Well, um, depends, I guess, where they're at and what their experience has been. But working on, you know, their, their selves, working on their own self-confidence, reevaluating their self-talk, what's going on. Um, feeling good in their own bodies, so really working on uh, their self-image, their emotional state, and also uh, just be you. I, I often say to men, you know, don't try and be someone that you're not because when you're someone that you're not, that's an energy that a woman picks up from a mile away. <laughs> She will know when you're trying too hard, when you're over the top with things. And I always say, just just be you and be vulnerable. If 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 that's how you feel, it, just be vulnerable because that also is attractive. And in the sense that it gives a woman, it shows her that you're human. <laughs> You right. are human. And um, I think that's something that is overlooked. And because, you know, most of the, the clients that I work with are those high achieving, that usually they're perfectionists. They, they have everything compartmentalized. They know how everything has to sort of like pan out for them. And they bring in those qualities that are, great at work and what they do it's sort of like they it migrates into their relationships and you know relationships aren't like that <laughs> they're they're um you know you have to be vigilant you have to know what you want but also know that it's 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 okay to be you yeah because there comes a point where you have to be you in a relationship right you can't maintain that level of perfectionism and high achieving all the time. So do you work with a lot of divorced men? Like what advice would you give them coming out of a marriage and now they're ready to date again? Like what are some things that they need to do before they put themselves back out there in the dating world? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do work with a lot of men that have come out of a divorce. Again, it depends on how long they've 
been out of a divorce. Now, there's no time frame. You know, people say, oh, you got to stay single for a year, two years, three years or whatever, and you've got to date X amount of people before you start settling down. You really can't put a time to it. But I do certainly um, encourage that men do invest in themselves first in some shape or form before they actually dive into another serious relationship uh, simply because they're, they've they been through a lot emotionally, mentally. Uh, there may be children involved as well. So they need to regroup and get themselves together before they, and give to themselves, fill their own cup before they're able and, and, and be available to another woman in a way that they want it to be different from their last, obviously. A lot of dating experts and coaches, matchmakers are reminding men and women out there to be vulnerable. What is your take on that? Like, what do you, what does that mean for someone to be vulnerable in a relationship or while they're dating? Okay. So vulnerable in which way? Like it, it can. Yeah. When uh, people are saying, kind of like what you were saying earlier, like, go ahead and be vulnerable on a date. Like, what are some examples that you mean by that for the men to behave on a date? Okay. Well, again, it depends at what stage of the date. Um, vulnerability doesn't mean, you know, particularly in the beginning stages to be totally open and just reveal everything. I think, you know, you've got to keep some things to yourself. Um, I think you've got to gauge it. You've got to be able to say, okay, well, how do I feel with this person? Uh, what's the energy that I'm receiving from this person? What's the investment from this other person with me? And and that in itself is going to be able to gauge, you know, whether you want to be vulnerable, whether you choose to be vulnerable, how much to be vulnerable. Um, I think what is really important, particularly in the beginning stages, is not to go too deep about your past because couples people can get really caught up in talking about their exes their divorces and how she did this to me and how she was toxic and narcissistic and and they're just so consumed of their ex and to them they feel that's vulnerability they're being vulnerable and sharing with a woman but in actual fact that is a real um, turn off you know it's not vulnerability it's it's being victim sorry to say but you know they're still hurting and possibly that can be also um, a reason as to check in on yourself or am I still stuck with thinking about my ex and am I, am I still hurting because obviously to be talking about it in such a way you're still hurting so that that's an indication that you may need to still work on healing that part of your life, that part of your relationship. So, yeah, that's definitely not the way to go and be vulnerable. You know, when I talk about vulnerability, um, I don't know, you can talk about something when you were younger and, you know, you show a little bit of emotion. Again, one has to gauge it. Um, yeah, that that's what I would say. That's what I would say. Sometimes men can be vulnerable in sharing um, all their, what they have as assets. <laughs> and, you know, I always say, you know, why are they doing it? Is it just to impress a woman? Is it to lure a woman in because a, a man may have, um, is of a certain status? And, some say it's vulnerability, you know, being able to just share what <laughs> they're worth. However, that can backfire because that can also be luring in the wrong type of woman. And again, it depends uh, what transpires and how the relationship evolves. You have an indication of whether she's just there for the money, whether she is a quote unquote, a gold digger, as they say, or she's genuinely interested in you 
as a person, as a, you know, partner. Do you teach men to not lead with money, to not brag about their assets? Like how would a man who's very successful, makes a great living, flies first class, rents nice cars, has nice cars, stay at great hotels, and he doesn't want to attract a gold digger. So how would he go about displaying who he is without attracting the wrong people, whether it's online or through a matchmaker, or how would you suggest he present himself? Okay, so I don't suggest he changes the way he presents himself because if he's a wealthy man and he leads with, you know, confidence and his status in, you know, travels the world, drives nice cars, has a great company, has a beautiful house. I mean, obviously he loves that and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Obviously he's going to be attracting all sorts of women and probably the majority of women maybe from only from what I've heard from you know my male clients they are women who are just interested in his money now you said to me you asked me how how is he not going to attract well it's not about not being able to attract it's about being discerning it's about saying okay I'm going to be attracting all sorts of women and I'm certainly going to be attracting gold diggers but Am I going to be able to qualify them in a shorter time than what I used to? You know, this is when they're working with me. It's not about changing who you are. We love who you are. <laughs> you love who you are. You know, and that's, it's about, I guess, um, enlightening my male clients to use their own intuition, their own skills to be discerning enough and to do it in a shorter period of time than possibly than what they used to because what they used to do was probably invest too much time, money to realize that they were going down the wrong path. Now, if I'm a woman listening to this and I want to attract a high achieving man, how would I go about presenting myself? Hmm, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I've had that I've had that sit asked me you know, people have asked me that before. Well, again, you, you have to be what you want to attract. So what does a high caliber man look for in a woman? You know, he's, he's obviously after someone who takes care of herself, who is somewhat educated. I don't think it's all about, you know, having degrees and PhDs and I think a woman that carries herself well has self-respect um, and is willing to be courted <laughs> by a gentleman you know um, and not feel in any way uh, intimidated by him because these type of men they you know they they want to be challenged they just don't want to be squashed <laughs> and controlled. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So the men are looking for someone who they can bring to a party and she's smart and she could hold her own and she looks good and she's well put together, but probably not like too bossy. Right. I mean, I can't do your men like type a women or are they looking for someone not so type a so strong career oriented, like, what are some of the women that your men are looking for? Okay, so I think there's a balance. There's a, a there's this balance that goes on. These men aren't after women that they can control or they're submissive, okay? They like a strong woman. They're attracted to a strong woman. They're attracted to someone that can hold them, you know, put themselves together and, and hold their own, who is somewhat independent, but also isn't afraid to ask for help. Because let's face it, some independent, strong alpha women have just like, you know, can't ask for help or can't come to a man and for whatever reason. But biologically, men love 
to be needed. Women love to be wanted. <laughs> Men love to be needed. So there's this delicate dance that I always recommend to women to have. Know when to be strong, not controlling, strong, because behind Beside every successful man, there's a strong woman, they say, right? So she needs to pick her times. And, you know, if she wants to have that conversation with him, that, you know, may not exactly be, well, I won't say pleasant, but, you know, she needs to express something that she was not happy with. She needs to do that, but in a way that isn't condescending in a way that isn't emasculating the man. Uh, I think there's ways, and this is really important. This is what I teach men as well, because they need to be stepping into their own as well, stepping into their own power. Yeah. I like what you said about how men want to be needed and women want to be wanted. And sometimes I get women who come to me and they're like, I don't need a man. But I'm like, okay, if you go around telling men that you don't need them, then they're not going to want to be in your world. And you have to be okay asking for help, asking for advice, asking for opinions. And it's okay to let him open the door for you and to do those nice gentlemanly things. I really have no problems with that. I'm not so, you know an advocate of women's rights where I'm opening my own doors and I get offended if a guy opens the door or holds the door open for me. It's like, no, I think he just wants to hear thank you and a smile. Yeah. Saw you exactly. approach him. He's being nice. And it's okay to let a man be a man. And it's okay to let women be feminine and to do feminine things for men. So, yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, I encourage women to step into their feminine, you know, step into that feminine energy, really embrace that because ideally that's what men want. They still want that strong. You can still be a strong, confident woman, but you can still be feminine or you can be strong and be too much in your masculine. And these men, you know, it's like hopping into bed with another man. <laughs> that's what they're going to feel like. That's what they say. So, you know, Keep that feminine energy flowing, you know, really connect with those, those creative juices, I say to women, because that in, enhances more feminine energy. Yeah, so it's, it's just very interesting. There's this beautiful, uh, delicate dance that has to go on between male and female. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, Stefania, thank you so much for your time with me today on the Asian Dating Podcast. Can you tell the audience a little bit about how do they work with you? How do they find you and what your specific niche is, whether it's age range or geographical location? Like who are the ideal clients you work with? Okay, great. Well, I work with anyone around the world. So predominantly my my work is online uh, and that has been really successful because a lot of my my market is in the states believe it or not I have a lot of American clients um, they can um, get hold of me through my website I'm on all social media I, I believe you're going to be putting the links down I do have a, a free ebook that um, is you know up for grabs you can get that from my website five ways to make juicier connections with a woman. I also have um, a book, um, Master the Attraction, uh, the Master the Language of Attraction for Men. And you can get that on Amazon. I also, um, you know, am offering, particularly for those who are, uh, are viewing this, this podcast, uh, a complimentary, what I call an insight call. A lot of the times, you know, men have questions to ask me. I can give them a few tips, whatever that is. If they wish to work with me, they may want to express that in that consultation. If not, that's not a problem as well. Um, yeah, so that's how they can get hold of me. And definitely, um, you know, no question is too big or too small. I'm I'm here to to help. Yes. 
Three. This is your chance, gentlemen, to ask Stefania anything that you have a question with. Maybe it's something you didn't want to ask another guy friend of yours, but be nice to talk to someone neutral and who has tons of experience in this. So thank you very much, Stefania, for your time. And men, if you're out there looking for an Asian woman, I would love to help you. Please go to twoasianmatchmakers.com, fill out the form, and then I can get in touch with you. And ladies, if you want to be set up, I need a way to find you. So please go to Two Asian Matchmakers and fill out a profile with me. That way I can set you up with a great guy. So thank you, Stefania, and I will uh, talk to you later. Bye. Awesome. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much. Bye.